Thanks so much for that. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome. We are thrilled to have you at the Unaccompanied and Separated Children Task Force uh, session. Before we get started, um, there's a mentee, or not a mentee, um, well, I believe it is a mentee, actually, that's going into the chat box. This just gets um, an opening poll, yes, there it is, that just gives us a bit of a, an understanding of who's in the room, what region you're from. So we're just going to give you um, a few seconds to open that, and please answer the brief questions there. Great. Um, so welcome, everyone. So today what we're going to do is look at uh, first understand a bit about uh, your experience working with unaccompanied and separated children, which we may use the acronym UASC from now on. Um, then we're going to just give a little bit of an introduction as to who we are, what's the history of the UASC task force and where have we come from. And then being able to detail a bit further about what we offer and how you can engage with us. Um, and then lastly, we'll close with um, a Jamboard session just to hear a bit more from you. So um, I see the new mentee is in the chat box now. I'll ask you to please click on that and we'll look at the first uh, question together. So our first question is, have you worked on issues related to UASC? I'm seeing an overwhelming yes at the moment. We'll give a few more moments for people to, to get into that link. Great, some not yet. If anyone's having trouble, the link is in the chat box. And you should be able to just click on and see the first question. Okay, great. So our next question is, if you have, so I see there's quite a variety of people. Most people have worked on uh, issues related to unaccompanied and separated children, but there's some who haven't, not yet, or maybe haven't, um, and, and don't know if that will be part of their role. So we wanted to see from you who you get technical support from. So I see uh, colleagues, global and regional technical advisors, uh, UNHCR, fantastic, the cluster coordinator, that's great to hear, and peer agencies, UNICEF, uh, great, a lot in there about coordination, which is fantastic. Manager. And can we scroll down, Natalie, if you don't mind? Great. And the Alliance, fantastic. My own research and other context documentation. Yes, that seems to often be the case that we just go on our own, our own search. So hoping that we can make your search a little bit easier today. Great. And Global Technical Advisor. Fantastic. So a lot, a lot of different sources, both interagency and within um, your own organization. Fantastic. And I wish I could speak French. Okay, great. We can go on to the next question. So if not, if you aren't getting the um, support or guidance you you need, where would you look for support if you had to? And I saw someone already wrote, I would do my own research online. And here we go, we've got online again. Are there any other thoughts to this? I'm hoping maybe this means that people are, okay, I see not applicable. So people are getting support uh, one way or another if they have questions. I know often when it comes to issues around unaccompanied and separated children, it's not something we can wait for or hope we get a training on. It's oftentimes a pressing need that we need to respond to immediately. So I'm really glad um, glad to see that there's a couple of resources. Yes, we'd look online, we'd look at the minimum standards um, and see some guidance in there. That's great. And then the last question is, um, which guidance documents have you used before in your work? 
So those of you who looked online or have been maybe referred to a document from the Alliance or your cluster, um, what documents have you used? Great, I still see answers coming in. We'll give it maybe another minute. Maybe you remember you used a document, but you can't remember the title. Feel free to look it up. So I see here there's quite a few different documents. So we've got the UASC guidance, the minimum standards, the interagency guiding principles on unaccompanied and separated children, UNHCR's UASC SOP, uh, interagency guidance. So it looks like quite a lot of interagency resources. And then, of course, the kind of UNHCR specific SOP. Great. I'm very glad to see someone's put the UASC field book and toolkit. That's great to see. Um, we'll be spotlighting that a little very briefly today. Fantastic. Okay. I think we can probably close there, Natalie. Thank you so much. Um, thanks everyone for your input. It's really great to see um, that you, kind of who's in the room if you're focusing on these issues, if you're getting the support you needed and where you're getting that from. And we'll come back to this at the end of the session. But without further ado, I'll hand over to my colleague, Jerry. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, can you share the, the slide, please? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so uh, thanks, Laurie, uh, for this uh, intro. Um, I just wanna share with you uh, two or three things. One is about when we started with the UIC task force, how it started, I mean, and uh, also to talk to you about membership and encourage you to join for those who'd like to join as well. So um, as you know, when there is any uh, climate disaster or any uh, crisis, there is forced displacement of people and uh, uh, there is always exposure to family separation uh, and that brings uh, families to be separated from their children and uh, uh, then we have uh, an accompanying separated children and uh, I mean uh, different organizations started working on this uh, uh, many years before, like ICRC, like uh, Save the Children, UNICEF, UNHCR. But uh, formally in 2007, as you can see, uh, it came up a child protection working group uh, in which we had the intelligence working group uh, uh, and accompanied separated children uh, that was working there with ICRC being a full member by that time. But in 2016, uh, so the child protection working group split it into two, and then we had the child protection uh, area of responsibility and the child protection and humanitarian actions. And uh, then now we had the unaccompanied separated children task force that was created in uh, since uh, 2016 under the child protection and humanitarian actions, that is Alliance. So uh, this is about the when we started uh, historically, uh, but in terms of uh, membership uh, for now, we have uh, 12 members who are attending. We have a uh, UN agency as well as uh, uh, international organization, but also national organization. So, uh, and uh, 
part of this organization if you're interested. Uh, we have all the lists on our website, but uh, we have IOM, we have ICRC, we had World Vision, IRC, we have uh, Terdezom, we have LUMO, Save the Children, International Association of Schools of Social Work. We have also UNHCR, UNICEF, and we also have the HII. AS, which is the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society and the Child Destiny and Development Organization. But if you'd like to join, um, if you'd like to join, uh, sorry, if you'd like to join us, please, you just go on uh, the Alliance webpage and from there, if you click that link, it will bring you uh, to the site that will give you more information about the UIC and how to join, how to become a member from your organization, or you just send us a message to the UIC uh, uh, tf at alliance uh, cpha.org, and then you, we can also receive your request and uh, we can also orient you to whoever. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, she has put it in the chat. We can also orient you and give you uh, opportunity to, to, to get more. Sorry. Next slide, please. Yeah, so talking about our mission as a UIC, as I was speaking, we, we do enhance the protection of uh, unaccompanied and separated children in conflict and natural disaster. But this is going, or it's, it's a work done under three main pillar. Uh, although we are working for the prevention and the response, but uh, the one pillar is working on the family tracing. The other pillar is uh, supporting the work around the uh, reunification work. And the other pillar is about the temporary uh, care as well. So um, the UIC task force, we also provide some of the technical materials and support to guide uh, one on policy development advocacy, but also on communication programming and resource mobilizations. So I will... Uh, hand it over to Lauren to take us through the rest of uh, the presentation. All right, thanks so much, Jerry. And I realized, Jerry, that we didn't really introduce ourselves, but thankfully we have a uh, well-translated bio in the chat box. So before I move on, do you want to do a quick introduction? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Jerry Abdallah. Uh, I work with IRC as uh, Child Protection Technical Advisor, and uh, I co-lead the UIC Task Force with uh, Lauren. Yeah, and uh, so my name is Laurie. I work with Save the Children as a humanitarian child protection lead um, and recently joined Jerry uh, co-leading this task force. Um, so we can go back to the slides. Um, so what, what we wanted to do is also introduce our priorities. You'll see here we've got a QR code. Um, and this gives us a bit of an introduction as to who we are and what you can expect from us. So our priorities are to ensure that technical standards and tools for UASC programming reflect the latest evidence and feedback from relevant actors, including other sectors and local partners. So we are always very open to getting your feedback. Do you have what you need? Um, is there another tool or resource you need? Do you have evidence that we can build into this? Um, our goal is also to increase the ability of all actors at different levels and within different contexts um, to access existing technical tools and knowledge. So we really also want to focus on local actors being able to access these tools. Um, so I'll walk through some of the tools and uh, capacity building materials that we have. Um, we also are here to help facilitate the coordination, participation and contributions of all UASC task force members as well as coordinating with the other groups. Some of you may have seen uh, Jerry and I this morning with the case management task force, uh, which we work hand in hand with um, as a lot of these issues overlap. Um, and we also then work with both kind of internal entities, but external as well to the Alliance, making sure that we're coordinating kind of across these wider, the wider spectrum. And um, our goal is to make sure that we provide timely responses to questions and issues, that if this is coming up, um, that no, no one feels kind of alone or that they are waiting in the dark, but that they're able to reach out for support. Next slide, please. So what can you expect from us? So we provide reactive support with and through the existing coordination mechanisms in country. So we're not coming in on our own, but, but working with those who are already working there, who have the contextual knowledge that we may not have um, and who are requesting support. 
And we have a couple of helpful uh, guidance and documents around this so we can support to contextualize key messages around preventing family separation. Um, you'll see there that we've got an example that came from um, ICRC that was used in the Ukraine response and translated into several languages. So we can share different materials like this um, and support you in terms of contextualizing this for your response. We also have a guidance note on the primary prevention of family separation, and there's a learning package as well. So um, if you're looking for kind of materials that you can distribute maybe within a community, or you're looking for some further guidance, or you're looking for some training, these are all available. On to the next slide, please. So we can also uh, support in discussing if a UASC assessment is relevant in your context and provide some examples and tools on how to run an assessment. So in there, we've got a key resource um, from the UASC toolkit, which someone mentioned in the opening mentee, which is fantastic. Um, and we've also included an example here from Tigre, um, but we can share more of those. It's just a bit of a snapshot for you to see uh, what has been done in other contexts. Onto the next slide, please. And we can help in supporting to identify appropriate learning materials. So if in your context, you're seeing that there's a need um, to strengthen capacity on prevention, we've got a package for that. Um, if there's a need actually for caseworkers to strengthen their knowledge and skills when it comes to working with UASC, um, we've got a very recent package, just a, I think a week or two, that has gone online for that. Um, and then very exciting, we have a UASC training of trainers coming very soon. Um, and so that will be up and online. And uh, if you join our task force, you'll see it there, but you'll also see it on the Alliance website. Um, so please do feel free to reach out if there are resources uh, that you're looking for, for training and capacity building within your context. Next slide, please. We're also here to help troubleshoot. We know that within each context, very unique issues rise up um, and we're happy to respond to those as they come up. And as I said, we like to do that in a timely manner. So um, that can be everything from anticipatory action, supporting in some of those preparations and that work that may be needed to the first phase response. We're available uh, at the start of an emergency when things are as we know, most of the time a bit confusing and chaotic and we never have figures on UASC, but what can we be doing in those initial stages? And then of course, throughout. So we do a lot of support um, in terms of protracted emergencies as well. Um, and so we have the toolkit, um, the UASC toolkit. We've got the alternative care and emergencies toolkit, which is, um, as no one seemed to mention it on the mentee, but it's uh, a, a more outdated toolkit, but still incredibly relevant. And then uh, another resource we wanted to highlight here, uh, quite a unique resource from UNHCR is guidelines on supervised independent living for unaccompanied children. Um, this has interestingly been uh, one of the resources we've been sharing the most lately, um, as this seems to be coming up more and more, especially when it comes to potentially adolescents on the move or, um, potentially older children who are not really going to be willing to be within uh, foster care or other family-based care. On to the next slide, please. So that is what you can expect from us. I will put the link to that offer document in the chat box, but this is our offer of support. Um, and do feel free to reach out to us. If you're interested in joining the task force, please do also feel free to reach out to us. I've put our email address in the chat box. Um, and we'd be happy to respond. But without further ado, I'll hand over to Jerry to talk us through some of these discussion questions. Thank you, Laurie. So I would like to, to take uh, these uh, 10 minutes to discuss a little bit around these uh, different questions. Uh, you've heard about uh, what we have, uh, what we offer as well. You said also that, uh, I mean, some of you have been exposed on working with uh, UIC or using some of the tools that we have presented, uh, but we'd like to hear from you. What are some of the key challenges you face when working on issues related to UIC? 
or uh, are there any successes that you'd like maybe to share with us uh, when you have been working with UIC, what came up in terms of successes? Uh, if you have any success story, you can share also with other colleagues who are here. But uh, also, if there is any issue related to UIC that you would like to receive support on, of course, uh, we'll be more than happy to receive your email, uh, writing, reaching to us as UIC Task Force. We can better have a bilateral meeting, but if there is something maybe you'd like maybe to highlight here, uh, we'll be really keen to hear that. So uh, whoever would like maybe to speak, just raise your hand, or you can also write in the chat. Uh, if you speak in French, feel free. You can write it in the chat in French. It's okay. Uh, we have interpreters. They will also. They can also help. And then, if you you are you are a French-speaking person, feel also free or Spanish or Arabic. Feel free to come up and speak in your language, and we'll also have the support from interpreters. So feel free to unmute or to raise your hand. Yes, Ranjini. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, no, I mean, um, it, it's been really helpful and, and, and also the support that UAC task was provided um, across the globe. Um, this is not linked to UAC, but also more of a family separation perspective. Um, I mean, in a context where, where you, you could see us UAC or, or um, you know, separated and accompanied children, but then I think we should look at it more of a family separation as more of a broader issue. And uh, how can we get more support from the task force in terms of to do more of an analysis perspective? Because sometimes it's very hard to um, document or to do, um, you know, capture the, the unaccompanied and separated children issues because for a context like in, um, in Ukraine, uh, we had a, a UAC task force, and then uh, we were not able to really get uh, uh, understanding of the UAC situation because it's also maybe it was difficult to to capture and document and uh, uh, the the children. But then the, the family separation is a continued issues. So I've been thinking a lot these days, like how we can actually look at it more of a, of a, of a broader perspective, uh, not just only stick to UAC, but to capture the family separation and causes and, and, and you know, root causes and underlying causes and, and beyond that, uh, whether the task force can able to facilitate some tools and techniques and, you know, or to help uh, the country team to do a bit more analysis on, on that. Um, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ranjini. It's really uh, an interesting question. Uh, and I think this morning we had also such similar question when we had the presentation with the case management task force regarding how to go beyond what we have in terms of you know, humanitarian context uh, when it comes to family separation and how we could better produce some, some of the tools and the guidance in order to support uh, the, 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 the front line uh, colleague who are working on this. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, that is a good question. I think uh, that is something that we'll be considering because uh, there is also a, an intelligence guidance on case management that is uh, on the process of being reviewed. It has been also highlighted that we should also maybe take that one also to reflect somehow that aspect as well, uh, while providing the case management support to the children, especially the UIC. Uh, but we'll take that one also into consideration in terms of thinking about tools as well uh, that might be helpful to you uh, and to support. There is a Jamboard also uh, in the chat box. If you don't have time to speak out because of the time, please feel free also to write it, uh, write your concern or questions directly over there. Lauren, would you like, Lori, would you like to add something before we take the next person? No, I think just to flag a few that are coming up in the Jamboard, um, having more tools and guidance around working with child-headed households would be really helpful. Um, and then I think this question and thinking about mandates, if uh, UNHCR can do BIAs, I know a lot of the partners can as well. Um, but if not, then how to deal with, uh, oh, I see that one disappeared, how to deal with um, uh, those types of cases. Um, and then having a bit more information on informal fostering systems on time. Now I see a few more coming up. This is great. Great. And then another one on cross-border reunification funding and monitoring, which was definitely one of the key points um, 
that came up this morning as well yeah. or a ded dedicated session to it yep I would like maybe to hear more from the person who said about the FTR being always extremely slow. Uh, uh, the person who wrote that if, if you feel comfortable to, to come in just to, to, to elaborate a little, a little bit more about that. Is there anyone else who would like to come in uh, either for a comment or uh, to share some success? Success story of the work that you have done with UIC at the field that would like maybe to share with participant. Maybe failure. <laughs> Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah, so my name is Adil Dahin. I'm working as a child protection advisor with World Child covering Syria response. Actually, after like 12 years of the Syrian crisis and several years of implementing case management and providing support in Northwest Syria, uh, which is a very fragile context, I think we're still in the first step like on providing support for, for unaccompanied and separated minors. Uh, as some uh, of our colleagues know that there is no presence of UN agencies on the ground, so we don't have the regular BID process and even BIA procedure. So, and especially this problem became more after the earthquake hit Turkey and, and, and uh, Northwest Syria. There is lack of data available on the ground, lack of uh, processes, and uh, lack of alternative or uh, mid-term solutions. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing your experience. I'm seeing another hand, but I can't tell who is that. Okay, uh, thank you, Jerry uh, and Lauren. Uh, this is Thomas from IRC South Sudan. Oh, Thomas, okay. Yeah, I just want to reflect something uh, on uh, USC uh, on reunification. For, uh, generally, this is not particularly to uh, our organization. As part of the USC uh, member, uh, IRC is also playing part uh, with the coordination of the uh, USC Working Group, uh, we managed to reunify uh, more than 6,000 children. Uh, uh, this uh, Actually, this was celebrated last year. Uh, uh, in recent days, when, when we see uh, the, uh, the trend, we see uh, the uh, decreasing trend in reunification. Uh, this is uh, uh, mostly uh, because of uh, the funding. Uh, there are different cases identified and uh, shared with uh, the uh, working group level. And then at the national level, uh, that uh, the US working group uh, linking with other uh, CP actors who are, uh, who are operating in that particular location. But these days because of funding, uh, especially the national NGOs, uh, they are clothing, they don't have program. Because of that, the tracing uh, part is now uh, a problem. So uh, as a result of uh, this uh, funding, uh, reduction of funding uh, for child protection, uh, the uh, reunification process, uh, when you see the trend, is decreasing as compared to the previous time. Uh, so it's, it's good to advocate uh, for funding, uh, especially uh, this uh, localization uh, initiative. That's one of the priority uh, in this uh, South Sudan as well. So uh, this is uh, uh, what I want to just uh, flag, uh, continue. Uh, advocating on uh, particular funding to child protection. Thank you, uh, back to you. 
thanks for sharing the experience from uh, uh, South Sudan, especially uh, regarding the uh, tracing and reunification challenges that we are facing uh, based on the lack of funding. Uh, but it's good to hear that you have been also supporting and having more success in terms of providing your support to UIC and uh, facilitating uh, some of the reunification in your previous work. Um, so um, I don't know if we can move to the next uh, Mentimeter because here you have been sharing some success. Yeah, here. Um, yeah, so uh, he would like you maybe to put just to highlight, uh, it will help us as UIC task force, if there are some key uh, issues related to UIC, where maybe uh, you would like to receive support from us based on what Lori has presented, please uh, bring that to our attention so that uh, uh, we can work on it. Uh, and if it's something specific to your organization or to some a place where you are working, uh, to help us also, you know, to know who highlighted that, you can also just put either the email of your organization so that if there is something that would like us maybe to reach out to you right after, uh, we can also contact you uh, after uh, on the UIC, uh, any specific support that you'd like to receive from us. Uh, as Lori said, uh, we shared with you the what we offer because we wanted you to know what we are available with, with what we can offer, what, what we can support with, uh, even though uh, from the UIC work perspective, we really encourage requests to come from countries so that we can work on it. But we wanted also to present you what we can offer so that you can also reach out to us uh, so that we know how to better support you on our side. Uh, so I know that we are running uh, uh, behind the time, but before um, moving to the next step, I don't know if Lori would like to have any particular comments um, before I give uh, information about the next step. No, thank you so much, Jerry, and thanks everyone for your contributions. We will keep this Jamboard open. So if you do have additional things that you think of, please feel free to add for the rest of the week. We're happy to, um, to look at it starting next week and, and have this kind of determine some of our priorities. Thanks so much, Jerry, over to you.